Hey guys, it's 18-2. Welcome back to Zoo Tycoon Complete Collection. In the last part... Yeah, yeah, I got a cash bonus. In the last part, we got three types of apes in our zoo. In this part, I can't get the rest of the primates because I don't have access to the mandrel yet. Oh well. Let's start off with the last of the apes that I need to build an exhibit for. And I know what you might be thinking. Wait, aren't Bigfoot and Yeti primates? Uh, strictly speaking, it, uh, we have so little information regarding the cryptids called Bigfoot, Yeti, Sasquatch, etc., uh, that they are going to count as cryptids. Which, yes, is a category for, uh, well, animals that may or may not exist. However, we're going with something that definitely exists, which is the orangutan, one of the most, did I, I did build, did I build, I did buy a male-female pair, right, I wasn't really paying attention, it needs, okay, dirt and rainforest floor, so, of the primates in the zoo right now, Three of which are in exhibits, one of which is walking around and giving me money. Uh, the orangutans are arguably the most interesting, and yes, I am including humans in that. Humans are less interesting because I see humans all the time. Speaking as if I'm not one. I right, need dirt. Yeah, I thought so. Um, and partially the reason I think it's more interesting than the other two is the other two have more in common with humans than the orangutan does. Alright, foliage, rocks, shelter, the usual. And a toy. And I know what toy they like. They like their orangutan rope swing. And the orangutan jungle gym. Yeah, they're going to be real happy. I mean, after I uh, build their durian trees. I do have durian trees, right? Yes. One of the things I, I just got to say I love about Zoo Tycoon is I can build these trees such that animals could climb up them and easily jump over the fence, but it's not a safety hazard because they don't know how to do that. They can only climb over the fence if the fence is climbable. Even though the orangutan could probably just grab the top of the iron bars and just leap over. Venomous Spiders is now available. Uh, here, I have some limestone. You like limestone? You don't like that much limestone. Suitability 98. I don't care if you want more cliffs and hills. So, the orangutan are first endangered species. Yeah. Well, the first one that was actually in the in the endangered species pack, uh, as I mentioned, 
before this zoo will have things in the base zoo tycoon along with the things that you were uh, downloadable content before DLC was really a thing and the endangered species expansion so at one time orangutan was the name given to several species of large ape in the Malay language oh sorry given to large ape in the Malay language it means man of the jungle so it was descriptive of many of the great apes today the name orangutan refers to pongo pygmaeus the world's largest tree dwelling animal orangutans are probably best no known for their thick coat of long reddish fur that covers their large bodies personally i consider it more orange but that might entirely be because i grew up in the 90s and the mascot for Tang was an orangutan, and Tang was orange. Also, that just looks orange to me. Uh, a male of the species may weigh as much as 200 pounds and stand up to four and a half feet tall. Females are smaller and usually weigh less than 100 pounds. Males have air sacs in their throats used for amplifying the sounds they make. This is useful for warning other males off their territory. Males also have large fleshy discs on the sides of their faces called phalanges, which have no known use. Really? They... Okay. I, I, I'm aware that I'm not a zoologist or any kind of biologist, but... If they have a sack in the throat used for amplifying sounds, and they have the flanges, which basically turn their face into a slight cone, you get the acoustic shell effect. It seems like, to me, as someone who's studied how acoustics work, I, I feel like it's the same purpose as the sack. it amplifies the sound in a direction. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's as valid a hypothesis as... I think it's a more valid hypothesis than saying they're not for anything. Anyway, both males and females have exceptionally flexible bodies which allow them to travel through the treetops with ease. The bulk of an orangutan's diet comes from the trees in which they make their homes. Orangutans commute, uh, consume a great deal of leaves, bark, and fruit, but they are not entirely herbivorous. <laughs> not entirely. They will eat eggs, termites, and even small monkeys, especially when other foods are not readily available during the winter monsoon season. See that right there? That's why I wouldn't call them entirely herbivorous. Uh, they are more uh, uh, opportun opportuni opportunivorous. If that's not a word, it should be. Just eat whatever you have access to. Certain members of the large cat family are known to hunt orangutans. Lighter female orangutans often hide from predators in the treetops, but the clouded leopard can attack them even there. Because, you know, the clouded leopard is a tree-dwelling large cat. Well, I'm sure I'll get into that when I get to the clouded leopard eventually. The orangutan is only found on the islands of Borneo and Sumatra. Sumatran orangutans have thicker, lighter colored hair than their Borneo cousins, primarily because Sumatra is slightly colder. In both locations, orangutans live in the tropical rainforest, moving from nest to nest high in the trees. Most orangutans build two five-foot diameter nests each day, a day nest and a night nest. Nests are made from, made from tree fronds and are lined with soft leaves. Old nests are seldom reused. The heavier males are sometimes known to sleep without a nest, either in the fork of a tree or occasionally on the ground. 
Unlike many other apes, orangutans are solitary animals and generally travel alone. Young pairs of females are the only long-term social grouping found. More animals and objects. Please tell me the mandrel is available. I'll look it up when that... when. I, hmm. I don't like the auto-close there. Where was I? Young pairs of females. Females nurse and share a nest with their young for the first three years of their lives. Young adults build separate nests, but remain nearby until they are about eight years old. Male orangutans are territorial, claiming large areas of the rainforest and any females found within as their own. They use loud calls amplified by the air sacs in their throats to warn other males off their territory. And again, I would argue also using the flanges. Males will not hesitate to fight if their warnings are ignored. Scientists estimate that only 25,000 orangutans are left in the wild. Poachers have killed or captured many of these great apes, while forest fires and logging have greatly decreased their habitats. Sorry, I'm seeing if I can get an exact... Well, not an exact number. The... A more recent number. Um, nope. Uh, all I've got is population decreasing. Which makes sense. Alright, so. They handled their height and weight. Uh, orangutans tend to live around 30 years. Uh, they are... I. I mean, if they were down to 25,000 and they're currently population decreasing, yeah, they are critically endangered. Um, well, they say they live in rainforests. Uh, more specifically, they live in uh, peat swamp forests, which are a type of rainforest. And I also have lowland swamps, but that's the same, it's the same swamp forest. Now, they did mention they eat fruit, bark, insects, eggs, small monkeys, other vegetation. Apparently they also will go after honey if they have access to it, because it's honey. Basically everything that can digest honey and probably even some things that don't that can't digest honey will eat honey because it's sweet uh, they are hunted specifically by tigers clouded leopards wild dogs and crocodiles now granted crocodiles are one are one of those species that if you're in the same area as a crocodile, the crocodile will eat you. Or try to. And fun fact here. So they went over, male orangutans are about four feet tall. And they have an average arm span of six and a half feet. Their arm span is 50% greater than their height. Um, if you want perspective on that, if a human had arms that long, an average adult male would have, uh, an arm span of about nine feet, so each arm would be, like, four, like, four-ish feet long. So, just, orangutans are, orangutans are really fascinating, because they, they it's like, they appear to have a, uh, an herbivorous diet, and it turns out, no, they don't. They at they are actually omnivores. 
Uh, the primate house won't quite fit. But I do want the primate house here so that I can... What do I have access to? I have access to endangered primates of the world. Like the orangutan. Primates of Southeast Asia. Like the orangutan. And the lemurs of Madagascar, which are something I cannot put in an exhibit. Because they don't have lemurs here. So, that's orangutans. That did take up most of the time. Ooh. The question is, okay, I have all of baboons. Basically, if I don't have mandrills... Okay, I'm good. I'm good. I can do this. Episode might go a hair long. But I can uh, start a... I can do the last two primates. So I want there, that should be sufficient. Uh, there we go. Why am I calling it Color Monkey? Because mandrills are very colorful. I mean, not you can't really see it in this game, but I mean, you can see they did honestly not all that great in coloring them in their information. Just trust me, they are colorful. They are very colorful. They look really good. It needs rainforest floor, and I'm assuming some dirt. And of course, they want uh, they want more of their species, given that they can live in groups of up to. What was it? Some, some, something ridiculous, like 600? I think that... Yeah, something ridiculous, like... Ford is... Like... I, I really want to say 600. I'm not 100% certain on that. But it just feels right. And they like the elephant ear tree. That's the giant ficus tree. Do I not have elephant ear? I do not have elephant ear. Well, they are African. So... Uh, orchids. Orchid trees. Generic rocks, okay. So, the mandrill. Biologist Charles Darwin called the mandrill the most vividly colored specimen in mammaldom. These large monkeys have white eyelids, blue cheeks, red noses, yellow beards, and lilac colored rumps. Male mandrills are twice the size of females, ranging between 50 and 90 pounds, and their colorful markings 
become much brighter when they reach sexual maturity. Their size and long canine teeth make the adult male mandrel the most formidable of any monkey. Yes, we're on the monkeys. There are two in the game. I mean, outside the... I don't know if lemurs are monkeys or if they're considered their own thing. Anyway, mandrels are found in the thick evergreen rainforests of Central West Africa, from Cameroon to Gabon and New Guinea. They prefer areas with a supply of drinking water and little ground cover. Their home range is about 115 miles, the largest known for any primate. Until recently, it was thought that mandrels belonged to the baboon family, and it was assumed that mandrels had a social structure similar to other members of this family. However, a recent DNA study showing that mandrels are neither baboons nor closely related to them, combined with the new field research on the mandrel, has given us a very different picture of mandrel society. Behaviorally, mandrels seem to be unique. They travel in much larger groups than previously believed. Scientists have counted groups containing up to 1,350 individuals, with a mean group size of around 620. Just for clarification, that is mean the mathematical term, not mean as an aggression. Not to say they're not aggressive, but it means, it means my number was right. Uh, the members of these groups remain together for years, forming a tight-knit and stable society. Another surprise is that these groups are compromised almost exclusively of females and their young. Males of breeding age join the groups only during the breeding season, which lasts from May until November. The rest of the year, the males are solitary while the females come into estrus. Males from all around descend on the group, battling fiercely with each other for breeding privileges. A single infant is born with fur and with its eyes already open. Newborns cling to the mother's belly immediately after birth. Infants have a black coat and pink skin for the first two months. Family bonds are long-lasting. The mother-daughter bond continues into adulthood, and the maternal bond with sons lasts until sexual maturity. Mandrels are omnivores that browse on a wide range of foods, covering three to five miles per day in their foraging along the forest floor. They will eat nuts, seeds, leaves, insects, fruit, bark, grass, fungi, and small animals. Mandrels have cheek pouches that can hold a substantial quantity of food, leaving their hands and feet free for running and climbing. At night, mandrels sleep in trees. Large groups of mandrels are very noisy and emit a continuous chorus of two-phase barks, frequent crowing, grunts, and squeals. Females and young use a call to locate each other and a call of alarm when they feel threatened. A mandrel's coloring gets brighter when it becomes excited or angry. Male mandrels present a threat by yawning, thereby fully exposing their long canines. A slight revealing of the teeth, possibly accompanied by a teeth chattering, communicates a greeting, general friendliness, and a sense of well-being. The primary predator of the mandrel is the leopard. The two biggest threats to this endangered species are posed by bush meat hunters and habitat destruction. The slow reproductive rate of mandrels puts their population at even greater risk. So, mandrels are really small. Uh, I've got their range as from a, from a little under to two feet to a little over two and a half feet and weighing between 25 to 60 pounds. They tend to live about 30 years. Uh, they are threatened, which does mean which is above endangered, so that's good. It's kind of nice referring back to an older game so we can see how we've progressed or regressed since that time. Um, uh, they live specifically in West African dense coastal tropical forests. Which is just a mouthful of saying they live in dense forests in wet and on the West African coast. 
uh, in addition to being hunted by leopards, they will also be hunted by eagles or snakes native to the area. And of course, their distinguishing features are their bright colors and their really sharp, long canines. Now, the final primate for the, for the primate zoo portion. I do not apologize for any of my uh, exhibit names, nor do I think will I ever. So you might notice right off the bat, uh, these are a little bit different from the other primates, as you can tell by the African savanna grass instead of rainforest grass. So no prizes for guessing well, I mean, you wouldn't have to guess. You would have noticed on the screen. I just... You know what? I'm going to stop talking. And then resume talking once I have somewhat formed thoughts in my head. I think that's fair. Do you need any fresh water? Nope. They just want... Um, shelter, and they like the baobab tree, I think I will now always have fond memories of the baobab tree. It was the, f it was the very first piece of foliage that I had to look up the pronunciation of for this series. Yes, yes, I know more animals. If, uh, if you want to see what kind of groups baboons live in, in New Jersey, uh, I think the Six Flags is technically south. Jersey. Uh, they have what at, I don't know if it still is the largest drive through um, basically zoo. Uh, but it, it used to be the largest, and the baboons um, have always been it. So it's divided into sections um, based off of the animal type. Like you have your African animals, uh, you've got a section for bears, you've got a section for tigers, and you get to a section of, of uh, the, the very last section in the drive. It's about half the size of, of most of the other sections. Except it's all baboons. And not, not just... And not different baboons. All the same type of baboon. They had to... Funny story. Uh, they had to implement a system where you couldn't go through if your car had a vinyl roof because they would rip that off. Then they got more aggressive. So then they went be then they got put behind bars. That still wasn't stopping them. So they are now currently behind electric fences. And they are it's it's something. Alright. <clears throat> Olive baboons are found in Equatorial Africa. These primates have black faces with prominent brow ridges, 
close-set eyes above dog-like muzzles, and powerful bodies covered with olive-brown brindled fur. Males weigh about 55 pounds, females weigh about 30 pounds, adult males have long, sharp canine teeth, and a cape-like a cape -like mantle of fur on the shoulders. Sure, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll go than that. The baboon is one of the more successful primates, having a widespread distribution across Central Africa. This extremely adaptable species... Uh, yep, uh, they... Oh my word, they are adaptable. They can be found in a variety of habitats. Unlike so many other species, the destruction of, of primary forest and the expansion of agriculture has served to expand rather than contract this animal's range. Found in many areas in the wild, the olive baboon is often placed in savanna exhibits in captivity. Yeah, they are absurdly uh, adaptable. Again, if you, could, if you look through the history of the Six Flags Wild Safari, I don't remember what the safari is called in New Jersey, it, I have stored, I have been there at, actually I think all four stages of letting the baboons roam free up to behind electric fences so they don't cause insane amounts of property damage. Because they just... Oh my... They, uh, yeah. Just read about it. Baboons are able to forage equally well in trees and on the ground. Their diet consists mostly of vegetable matter, including grass, leaves, seeds, buds, stalks, berries, nuts, bulbs, water plants, flowers, bark, sap, fruits, roots, mushrooms, and lichens. They will also eat insects, shellfish, small reptiles, fish, eggs, young birds, small mammals, and even antelope calves. Although olive baboons derive much of their water requirement from food and dew, they still prefer to drink regularly, digging wells and dry stream beds if necessary. Olive baboons generally live in a troop of 40 to 80 individuals, within which there is a rigid and complex social structure. Adult females outnumber males by more than 2 to 1. Rank within the group is carried by the females and organized by the family. Within each family, the mother has the highest rank, and her offspring are ranked according to age, with the youngest being first. Sons leave the troop upon reaching adolescence, but daughters remain with the troop for life and inherit their mother's status. They have a rigid matriarchal society. Olive baboons are sexually promiscuous. Males and females usually mate with several members of the opposite sex within a short period of time. Females give birth to one infant. Offspring remain close to their mother for the first one and a half years. Males change troops every few years. There is much aggression between males due to competition for females. However, if danger threatens the group, the adult males join forces surrounding the females and children and snarling and barking at the threat. When facing predators such as leopards, olive baboons will mob them often inflicting severe, severe injury. These things are ridiculous. Their main enemies are leopards, lions, hunting dogs, crocodiles, hyenas, jackals, great eagles, and python snakes. When they meet humans, baboons usually flee. However, if baboons happen to be up a tree, the human intruders usually get greeted by dung rain. And don't think a car will protect you, they will rip your car up. To avoid nocturnal predators, olive baboons, sleeps. olive baboons sleep on cliffs or in trees such as acacias. These animals spend most of their time on the ground during the day. They feed in the early morning and late evening, sitting on the ground and shuffling along as they forage. Olive baboons are capable of, of a wide range of vocalizations and also communicate with eye movements, facial expressions, and limb and tail movements. Males will threaten each other by audibly grinding their teeth at close quarters. Alarmed baboons will emit short, sharp yaks with their mouths wide open. 
All of Baboons have a robust population that are, and are not currently threatened. Yeah. Uh, let's see, do I have anything else to add about the Olive Baboon? No, I do not. Actually, I don't have anything written down for them. I just happen to know a lot about the Olive Baboon because uh, I used to live fairly close to the Six Flags in New Jersey. I say close. If you're in New Jersey, I consider you close to me. Uh, and, as I mentioned, Baboon Exhibit. Apparently there was a there was a humorous incident before uh, before I have per before I develop permanent memories. Uh, I then recall being turned away because uh, uh, my father's car had a vinyl roof, and so well initially they let you choose whether or not to go through just knowing that if you go through your roof would be torn up we didn't go through the next time we went through uh they also added precautions of take off your car antenna uh and anything else they could possibly grab they'll and uh pull your window your uh your side view mirrors in because I'll break those, too. We got pretty l lucky getting through, although we were constantly hounded by baboons. Um, eventually, there was enough dam- uh, I'm assuming it's enough damage done to people's cars that they're like, Okay, no, we need to put them uh, behind fencing. I will put old roller coaster parts for them to play on. But every once in a while, we get a report of a baboon that managed to escape the the uh, fencing. So they then eventually went with electric fencing. That seems to have worked, but when you go through, or at least as far as I remember, basically you just get baboons angrily staring at you the whole way. Or chase or following your car menacingly. Do not mess with baboons. I j just don't. J just don't. I know they mentioned a lot of predators they have. They also mentioned that if a predator shows up, there it's basically even odds as to whether the predator gets to eat or die. Anyway, I think that's the perfect place to end this off. I have, I currently have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine types of primates. So that's it. That is it for primates. Uh, I might go on to big cats next. I might go on to um, something else. We'll find out. Anyway, please remember to like or dislike and or comment and or subscribe as the algorithm demands. But for now, this has been 18.2 and I will see you guys next time.